Hello everyone, on this episode I'm going to be talking about Indiana Jones and the Secret of the Sphinx. I just finished reading this book about half an hour ago and unfortunately I was kind of disappointed in it. I had pretty high hopes and expectations because one, I love Max McCoy, he's my favorite Indiana Jones writer. And it's the last of the series pretty much, the original 12 Indiana Jones books. Now, I still have some of the movie novelizations to go through, like uh, I think it's the Temple of Doom, The Last Crusade, and there was also a later Indiana Jones book written by Steve Perry that's not supposed to be that good, hence why there wasn't another Indiana Jones book series after these 12, but um, I'm looking forward to the movie novelizations. Uh, hopefully those are pretty good, but um, I'm kind of sad. It took me a couple of years to go through these 12 books and, you know, for it to end kind of, eh, sucks. Uh, now, I'm not going to say I don't like the book. It's a good book. It's probably one of the best Indiana Jones books, but it could have been amazing. It should have been the best one. I think Max McCoy, the author, really had the foundation built for a great Indiana Jones book. Um, basically, Indiana Jones, the book starts off with him going through the first emperor of China's tomb, you know, where all the terracotta soldiers are and stuff. Uh, Chen Shi Huang Di, I believe his name is. And um, oddly enough, that's the same place we go in the uh, video game Indiana Jones and the Emperor's Tomb. So. Uh, oddly enough, uh, because I think this takes place about six months or a year before that game, so oddly enough, uh, Indiana Jones had already been there if this book and game are canon, so kind of interesting, but, um, yeah, so the book starts off there, Indy's basically going through there, he's the first person to go through there, and setting off all the booby traps and everything, and interestingly enough, in real life, that tomb has booby traps in it, like crossbows and all kinds of crazy shit. That's why they're taking their time going through it. Well, and the place is full of mercury too, so yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, that was a pretty cool setting to start off the book. I wish it had been longer because that part of the book's only like 20, 30 pages maybe at the most. I wish that had been like the first hundred pages of the book because... Indiana Jones going through the temple, I mean the tomb of the uh, first emperor of China, that's kind of a big deal. And uh, basically after that, Indy's captured by the Japanese who are invading China at this time because the book takes place in 1934. And he's tortured and just, yeah, shit gets crazy. Yeah. And uh, we are introduced to the main villain of the book. Uh, I believe he's a Japanese pilot named Sokai, who's also like a spy master and stuff. Um, I actually thought he was a really cool villain. Like the premise with him was pretty cool. Like uh, basically his father was Russian and his mother's a Japanese geisha. So he pretty much grew up being uh, called a gaijin and considered an outsider and stuff. Yeah, I believe his father was uh, killed for being a spy during the Russo-Japanese War. So... He basically grew up uh, being discriminated against his entire life in his home country and, uh, you know, studies the way of the samurai, Bushido and all that. And yeah, I really thought that he was a cool character. And um, basically we are introduced to some of the other villains and uh, basically his lieutenants and stuff. And they're pretty interesting. One of them's a woman who's very uh, angry and murderous and all that. So kind of interesting. And uh you know, Indy escapes, but uh, Sokai ends up uh, losing an eyeball and basically devoting himself to getting revenge on Indiana Jones. So, yeah, it was really cool. And uh, Indiana Jones basically escapes and runs into some uh, female magicians from Oklahoma. <sighs> I did not care for these characters. They were okay in the first half of the book, but by the end, they were just... They might as well have been Phoebe Waller Bridges. I mean, they were just knew too much, were too good, and basically made fun of Indiana Jones and stuff. And I just did not appreciate these characters at the end. They were okay, like I said, in the first half, but by the end, uh, basically, it's a magician woman and her daughter, Mystery. I hate that name. I think she's like 15 or 17 years old. 
And basically, they are going across Asia doing magic shows, trying to find uh, basically Mystery's father who disappeared, looking for the staff of Aaron, which is a staff that Moses used during the Exodus. And supposedly, the staff will also help them find the Omega Book. And the Omega Book basically tells the history, the past, present, and future of every single person ever born. So. It's kind of a powerful thing, but um, basically Max McCoy just made that up. It's not really a thing, but it's, you know, interesting. And naturally, Indiana Jones wants to find it to, you know, find out what happens to him, finds out, find out what happened to his loves. You know, it's just, yeah, he's got his reasons for looking for it. And basically the two magicians are just trying to find the husband and father pretty much. So they help Indy escape, and Indy gets on a ship, and they get hit by a typhoon. Indy meets, a, I believe he was an Australian doctor on board, and he was actually a pretty good character. And then he dies, and it's just, yeah, <laughs> you know. Then they end up on a secluded island for lepers, and that was kind of interesting. And then from there, they fly to Calcutta, and they run into uh, Jadu, I believe his name was. He was like a magician black magic kind of guy and uh, he basically points them in the direction to go and find the staff of Aaron and they end up going to northern Iraq where the Yazidis are because supposedly they're the ones that have the staff now I've heard of the Yazidis because of what happened uh, when Isis invaded Iraq god how many years ago was that like five six seven that might have been almost ten years ago geez because they were persecuting the hell out of the Yazidis Sell them in the slave markets and shit. So, yeah. It was kind of cool uh, seeing them in an Indiana Jones book. And, uh, yeah, from there, they basically drive on some motorcycles that Indiana Jones bought. Uh, I guess Marcus sent him some money, wired him some money, and uh, they bought some motorcycles and just drove across the Middle East all the way to Egypt because the uh, they actually find the staff and... The mother magician is the only one who can use the staff, of course, <laughs> just by chance, you know. Um, and uh, yeah, basically the staff tells her that the Omega book is in the Sphinx. So Indy hooks up with Sala and they uh, dig their way into the Sphinx. And yeah, I mean, uh, basically up until then, the book is great. I'm loving it. I'm reading it fast and... You know, having a good time. But then Sala, being a little heavy, he gets a little tired and he's like, you go on, Indy, I'm out of breath. So Indy goes on and then Mystery, who's not supposed to be going into the Sphinx, shows up and basically does everything better than Indy. I mean, it was such a weird pivot. I mean, she's even giving him crap about how he climbs a rope and stuff. And Indy's like, oh, I'm old. And so I'm like... This is Indiana Jones, man. He's uh, he's like 34 in this book. I mean, this is right before Temple of Doom. You remember how in shape he was? Like, this is Indiana Jones in his prime. Like, he's not supposed to be like, ugh, you know? And this girl's like calling him fat and shit. I'm like, shut the fuck up, bitch. <laughs> you know, it's just very annoying. Like, I was having a good time. Indiana Jones and Sala digging through the Sphinx. I mean, this is pretty fucking cool. But now we got Mystery, who's like climbing a rope and finding out everything and the Sphinx and just knowing way more than she should. Basically, there's even a part where they find the Omega book and she's asking like, what language is it written in? And Indiana Jones is like, well, it's written in Coptic, Ancient Egyptian, Greek, Mandarin, Sanskrit. And um, she's like, well, this is why you're here. Like, that's the only reason why Indiana Jones is there, is to read the book. I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> so that she can know what happened to her father. I mean, I just, mm -mm. Then Sokai shows up and has a very anticlimactic death. I mean, I really wanted, you know, he and Indy to, like, have a big brawl. Like, Indiana Jones has his whip and his fists, and Sokai's trying to kill him with his katana and stuff. I... You know, wanted them to, like, have their fight on top of the Sphinx and stuff. Like, that would have been freaking awesome. And, you know, one day when I actually get to go to Giza and check out the Sphinx, I mean, it would have been cool to be, like, looking at it and being like, yep, oh, there's where Indiana Jones fought. It's okay. <laughs> but instead, 
for whatever reason, Max McCoy just kind of gave Sokai kind of a weird death. Like, it's not even clear, like, was it the book that killed him or just bad luck? I don't, yeah, it's kind of, kind of weird, but, um, yeah, basically from then on out, the, uh, female lieutenant tries to kill everybody, but she actually ends up having kind of a cool death, but again, it's like Indiana Jones is just pretty much standing there being helpless. I mean, I mean, I guess he does get in a fist fight, but he's helped by the staff. So it's kind of like he's not really doing much. You know, it's just, ah, it's such a weird pivot. It really does start like when Sala says I'm out of breath and, you know, you go on without me. Everything up until then was great. But after that, just Indy becomes a side character in his own story. And that does happen, you know, authors like writing more of their characters that they came up with. You know, I guess it's more creative for them to do that. But I mean, dude, I wish I had been Max McCoy's editor. I would have been like, dude, nobody gives a fuck about these ladies. Who cares? This is Indiana Jones. He has to kick ass. And to be fair, in the movies, it's pretty rare for Indiana Jones to actually kill the main villain. Like, I guess, Moloam. But you could also argue that the stones probably killed him. But, you know, at least they were having a pretty badass fight. And Indiana Jones does kick the uh, colonel's ass in Last Crusade, but he doesn't kill Donovan. Well, you know, with, uh, what was her name, Elsa. I guess with Elsa's help, he does. But, you know, it's kind of like, eh. But, yeah, with a guy like Sokai who really wanted to kill Indiana Jones and get revenge on him, they really should have had a big-ass brawl. Like, mano y mano, that would have been freaking awesome, but... Oh well, and basically, the staff ends up saving them, kind of, and... Then the story, kind of, that story basically ends. The two magicians, after finding out what happened to the husband and father, they just go back to Oklahoma. Like, yeah, see ya. They don't even tell Indiana Jones goodbye, they just leave in the morning. They leave him a little note. And Mystery's like, ends the note with... Yeah, I had a crush on you, but I got over it. I'm like, <sighs> like, you just got to give Indiana Jones one more, you know, <laughs> one more insult or something. I was just, why are you fucking cutting Indiana Jones down, man? And uh, basically from there, we finish off the um, Indiana Jones finally finishes off the Crystal Skull arc that he's been uh, going through with the Max McCoy books. And uh, that was actually pretty good. I was OK with that. And then the ending ending of the book is kind of odd. I think it ends with Indiana Jones talking to Albert Einstein, even though he's not named, but it's kind of apparent that's who he's talking to. Because at this time, Indiana Jones is a professor at Princeton, but he just got a job offer to go to Barnett College, which I guess is where he is in the books and the, I mean, the movies and stuff. So yeah, I don't know why you would leave Princeton for there, but it, Okay, <laughs> I guess for canon purposes. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I just wish the book had kept its momentum and just, you know, kept building and building and building and had a satisfying conclusion, but it was kind of a muddled conclusion. I mean, Indiana Jones just wasn't pushing the plot anymore. He became a side character. He wasn't really the guy. And you see that a lot nowadays with the bait and switch movies and, you know, I mean, he didn't really end up pushing anything in Dial of Destiny. So it's kind of, you know, it's kind of weird because this book came out in 1999. It's kind of weird seeing that even happen back then. It's like, huh, weird. I mean, is it so hard to have the main character kick ass? Like, <laughs> like what the fuck? But, you know, it was a good book, but I just wish the ending had been better. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to reading The Temple of Doom and... Um, Last Crusade books and Army of the Dead, even though it's supposed to be eh, you know, hopefully it's okay. I don't think I'm going to read the novelization of Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I just, what's the point? I don't even consider that movie canon, so I don't know. But I definitely want to read all the Indiana Jones books and all that. But uh, yeah, I was disappointed with this one. I really wish I had a time machine to go back and, uh, you know, have uh, Max McCoy do it again. Like, no, you can do better, man. But, oh well, it was a good book, but, yeah. <laughs>